The disposable scalpel blades come in a variety of sizes and shapes, each for a particular situation. A small, straight blade might be run along the edges of the gum, releasing a large area quickly from the adjacent teeth. Larger curved blades enable access to more remote areas. With practice, you'll learn the doctor's preference and will be able to preload the needed blade on the reusable scalpel handle. Disposable one-piece handles and blades are available as well. These minimize handling the sharp blades and help improve safety. Bony defects are corrected using a combination of three things. The hand instruments, rotary instruments, and fillers. And the procedure is called an alveoplasty. First, rongeurs, which are sharp surgical pinching pliers, snip small pieces of jagged bone away, usually present after multiple extractions. Next, bone files, which are serrated hand instruments, let the doctor file smooth in a push-pull motion any remaining rough or sharp areas with great tactile sense. You should irrigate and aspirate the area well afterward. Bone reduction, especially if very extensive, is accomplished most quickly using the high-speed dental handpiece and burrs. If a handpiece is used, a water coolant is needed. We'll discuss handpieces and burrs in just a moment. Finally, bony voids or defects might be filled with gel foam or another brand of artificial bone fill. Some doctors even place bone scrapings from an adjacent area of the patient's mouth into the defect. Broken roots or root tips are accessed directly using a right or a left hand apical elevator or a root pick or by using a high speed handpiece and the surgical burr first. Excellent visibility is an absolute must so by properly adjusting the light and keeping the treatment field clear of blood and saliva using rinses and suction, treatment time is greatly reduced. Contrary to some people's thinking, the high-speed handpiece is actually safer and more efficient than the slow-speed handpiece, which can result in vibrations which can be incredibly disturbing to the patient. The handpiece and the burrs should be sterilized between uses, as should any reusable instrument used in any patient's mouth. If you're ever in doubt, simply ask yourself, would I place this in my mouth? Large amounts of coolant water and suction must accompany the drilling to ensure that the bone is not overheated or dried out. Recently, closed water bottle systems have become the recommended mode. The cleanliness of municipal water lines has come into doubt. In closed systems, sterile distilled water is delivered through the handpiece to the surgery site. The ADA recommends the use of such systems whenever possible. Be sure to follow manufacturer's instructions. The small metal suction tip shown is the primary vacuum source in oral surgery because of its generally more delicate nature. The high volume suction tip is needed when large volumes of vacuum are required, as when using the high speed handpiece and its water coolant. Forceps describe any instrument that's used for grasping. Tissue forceps have special small barbed ends that grasp and hold the gum tissue back during surgery or when removing biopsy specimens from the mouth to the bottle of preservative. They must be used carefully to minimize damaging healthy tissue. Here the assistant is demonstrating their ability to grab. Mouth props become very helpful when a patient tires of holding his mouth open or when the patient is sedated and can't be relied upon to do it at all. Rubber blocks and mechanical molt props are the ones most commonly used. Occasionally, impacted teeth must be extracted surgically. This might be when they're totally impacted under the gums and or bone or partially impacted when a small portion is exposed to the gum tissue. Sometimes surgical extractions of impacted teeth are called complex extractions. 
a term we like to avoid since it implies that some other extractions are simple extractions. The preferred terms are surgical or non-surgical extractions. Removing impacted teeth follows the previously described procedure, but with several major differences. The overlying gum tissue must first be laid back, and any bone that covers the crown of the teeth must be removed to allow the tooth to pass through and out of its socket. Plus, if the tooth is wider than the largest possible opening, or if its roots are flared, the tooth must be removed in several sections using the high-speed handpiece, or more rarely a mallet and a surgical chisel. Any surgical access and manipulation of tissue requires surgical closure. But first, make sure that all debris is washed and vacuumed from the socket, including any fragments of fillings or teeth. In dentistry, sutures are used to close surgical wounds. Sometimes, periodontal packing or dressings are incorporated within or upon the sutures. These are discussed in depth in the film on periodontics. Sutures are placed using locking hemostats. Most suture needles come with the suture attached to the needle. Reusable suture needles are also available which can be preloaded with suture thread and sterilized. The number and type of sutures used should always be documented in the patient's treatment record. Nylon sutures have the best strength but require a return visit for removal. Resorbable sutures are made of a natural or synthetic material and require no follow-up. Suture scissors are extremely sharp and are shaped to allow close access to the surface of the gum tissue when removing the suture. Once cut here, close to the gums, the loosened suture is grasped with cotton pliers or hemostats and pulled out. By cutting the now weak old suture at the gum line, little or no contaminated material is introduced beneath the gums. Special attention must be paid to adequately cleaning the socket before closure and to controlling the bleeding after suturing. Repeatedly emphasize the importance of the blood clot in the extraction site as a role in preventing a dry socket from forming. And also strongly recommend to the patient that they not smoke, use a straw, or spit. And if an extensive area was treated, cold compresses for the first 24 hours after surgery greatly reduce swelling. Later, any swelling that forms beyond that time will be relieved only by using heat packs. Two items of oral surgery care will hopefully never be needed. One is the emergency oxygen supply, and the second is the emergency medical kit. However, always make sure that both are available and operable before proceeding with any procedure. We've already discussed the dental extraction process. In review, the doctor releases the gums from the neck of the tooth. Loosens the tooth from its socket. and then gently lifts it out using the extraction forceps. And finally, he carefully checks the tooth and the extraction socket for debris or for broken roots. Remember, teeth are not pulled, contrary to what most people believe. They are elevated. Occasionally, your office may perform a biopsy for a patient. The procedure uses the processes described, adding to it a bottle of formalin, the preservative that freezes the tissue in its natural state, plus a biopsy report form. The tissue being sent for analysis must be handled delicately, yet placed in the bottle as quickly as possible to avoid any degradation. Occasionally, electrosurgery is used in oral surgery. High voltages, administered through tiny looped or straight tips, modify or remove any soft oral tissues without any significant bleeding, and scarring is also minimized. Naturally, 
Anytime something is burned, which is what electrosurgery does, there is smoke. The high volume suction cannot be overemphasized. And it's also not a bad idea to place a small amount of mentholated cream like Vicks Vapor Rub near a patient's nose to help mask the smell. There are several treatment complications that become especially challenging in oral surgery. The first is bleeding. Your management involves keeping the treatment field free of blood so that the doctor can perform the procedure. By making gauze and sutures, as well as chemical astringents available when needed, blood loss is usually minimal in oral surgery. Another complication is swelling. All surgery results in some degree of swelling, which is simply the loss or the release of fluid from the bloodstream into the underlying tissues. Swelling is minimized by carefully handling and instrumenting the oral tissues. Your doctor depends on good visibility to be able to do this properly. Other more specialized oral surgeries involve even higher degrees of skill and even more instruments. Cysts within the bony confines of the jaws might be excavated using large spoon curettes. Broken jaws may need screws, plates, or even wires. After surgery instructions, also called post-op instructions, are very important, but can be kept simple. Your office should have post-operative instruction handout for the patients to take home with them. Briefly, encourage your patients to bite on the gauze compress for at least 30 minutes, changing it and repeating if needed. Remind the patient to not spit, smoke, or use a straw. to take any medicines as prescribed, and to call the office if they have any questions or discomfort. The simpler the instructions, the better. You can imagine what the patient is going through immediately after treatment. Be mindful of that and make sure their companion hears what you have to say too. Many diagnostic aids help the doctor to make the proper surgical diagnosis and plan the needed care. Of these, dental x-rays are among the most important, acting for him as radar does for airline pilots. Usually the dental x-rays are your responsibility. The film on x-ray in this series offers a basic review in x-raying patients. Whether you're exposing intraoral or extraoral films, a proper understanding of the whole process is a must for you to get maximum diagnostic results with minimum patient exposure to radiation. Watch this patient throughout this x-ray process as we briefly review the key points. You want to remember to keep the film parallel to the teeth, both in the up and down and the side to side planes. Use a film holder to center the film behind the teeth and allow the beam to hit the film in the teeth at 90 degree angles. Get six feet or more away from the x-ray tube head and stay behind it at all times during the x-ray exposure. Use proper techniques regarding infection control and x-ray procedure. Drape the patient with a lead apron. Use the fastest films available, currently eSpeed, and be determined to get the exposure right the first time, minimizing retakes and excessive radiation exposure for the patient. The range of care in oral surgery seems limitless, and that's what makes it so interesting. Whether you work in general dentistry with occasional oral surgery, or in an oral surgery office with a full exposure to all aspects of oral surgery care, knowing the basic procedures and instruments used keeps you confident maximizes the doctor's time, and helps provide the patient's care in as orderly and pleasing manner as could be possibly imagined.